Thanks for joining me in the cab of my truck today. I'm Pastor Barbara Buck, and we're having spiritual conversations during the coronavirus times, a time of great uncertainty and change, and it's been going on for four months now, and I've been finding lately that I can get a knot in my stomach just uh, by thinking about what's to come. And so maybe you've been feeling this way too. I know I have a friend who applied for unemployment insurance in March and her co-workers applied in March. They got benefits right away. She didn't. She's been trying to get the attention of the employment department. Finally, a payment came in June and she's grateful for it. But she's owed for March, April, May. Her company was shut down because of COVID-19 and that was a cause of her layoff and Congress has enacted this law. And so uh, now it just makes a knot in my stomach to think about having to go to the employment department to try to convince them that they did wrong, that she's owed this back employment. Oh yeah, yeah. Another example of times that I'm glad I'm not dealing with is I have a friend who's suffering intense pain and she's been in this pain since uh, the beginning of the year and she was working with doctors for those first three months, first two months about how to ease the pain and things weren't working and finally at the beginning of March they said you know the only way we're going to be able to relieve your pain is through surgery with a procedure and so Then the coronavirus pandemic hit and hospitals became overwhelmed and elective surgery. Well, my friend is in constant pain, so it doesn't feel like an elective surgery to her. They had scheduled a a surgery date in June, thinking that there would be a break at that time, but that's been postponed. Now they're looking at a date in August, and they're also... She's waiting for family members to be able to fly here and to safely accompany her through this experience of the surgery. But to live with that kind of pain daily, that's stressful. And just thinking about it brings a knot in my stomach. So when the knot in my stomach came today, I turn to the book of Colossians in the New Testament and this is written by the Apostle Paul when he was on house arrest imprisonment in Rome and he's writing to his friends in Colossae they were fellow uh, followers of Christ and chapter 4 is wonderful and then I get to the next to last verse chapter I mean verse 17 And it's Paul telling him to pass along a word to a friend of his, Archippus, who Paul has called in another book, a fellow soldier of the cross, like me. And so he's a strong man of faith, I would imagine. And so verse 17 says, And say to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. And when I just read that verse, I just felt a little loosening of the knot in my stomach. Why? Because we need to remember that we have this day ahead of us. We have this day in order to respond to God's love for us in Jesus. And that is to live in the way that Jesus did. And that made me think of the first chapter of Acts in the New Testament, the first book right after the four Gospels that described everything that Jesus did and taught. And I love this one part. So it's in it's Acts chapter 1, and starting in verse 1, it says, Dear friend of God, dear Theophilus, friend of God, that means, in the first volume of this book, and he's referring to the Gospel of Luke, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the apostles, the ones he had chosen through the Holy Spirit, and was taken up into heaven. And I particularly like just that phrase there, everything that be- Jesus began to do and teach, because Jesus began to do acts of mercy and kindness and call people to knowing God in a personal relationship to bringing about the kingdom of God on earth and then offering the kingdom of God in heaven 
for the future. And he, after he ascended into heaven, he came back and he spent more time with the, the disciples and he talked to them. And one of the things he said, what you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And this is, cha this is verse 8 in chapter 1 of Acts. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all over Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. As they watched, he was taken up and disappeared, going to be with God, the Father in heaven. It unreleases that knot in my stomach to know not only that I've been given, you have been given, we all who are followers of Christ have been given something to do in service as a response to our love, to God's love for us. Not uh, to make ourselves feel better, but because we know God loved us so much that Jesus came and lived as a human being and gave himself. Because we have been uh, transformed by this faith in Christ, we now have a calling. You have a calling. And then I it further erases that knot because then I read in Acts that the early disciples were taught all that Jesus began to do and teach. And Jesus continued to teach them and he came back to teach them. And then when he left, he left the Holy Spirit to continue to teach us, to f teach all subsequent followers of Christ what to do with this day put before us. How to respond to God's love. We go back to the, the Gospels and we read what Jesus taught. We read what Jesus did. We look at how he cared for the vulnerable, the poor, the outcast. He chose to dine and eat with sinners. The, he used to... He, loved each person that he met and he saw their heart and he spoke to them and they could live. And that is an antidote for stress, if I ever heard. So glad you joined me and I'll see you on Spiritual Truck Talks YouTube channel.